in three, two, one, go. Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of It's a Dire Thing, Rob here. And I thought I would actually make a video edit out of a modification that I am doing on a stock exhaust uh, from a MT-10 or also an R1 for 2017 and newer. Um, there are a couple of videos out there with the different sound combinations and um, modifications to, uh, you know, mid cats and D cats and then shorty exhausts and and so on and so forth. And I've there was this one. Uh, it was in regards to a shorty exhaust uh, that was done from a stock muffler on an MT10, and I was quite actually uh, impressed by the look of it and uh, thinking that the sound would be really nice due to the fact that I do not want to invest tons of money um, on an aftermarket slip-on only to realize that maybe the sound is going to be the same. So I was lucky enough, I've actually accumulated um, a used stock muffler uh, from a gentleman up in Barrie area in Ontario by the name of Alex. Again, thank you very much for the deal. I am super stoked and, and I really appreciate uh, all your assistance on that. So, like I said, I thought I would uh, come here and uh, do step-by-step -step, um, on how to modify the stock exhaust of an MT-10 or R1. So, first thing first, let me get you set up here. So, just as you can see, um, you will recognize the actual exhaust itself uh, if you've removed it off of your R1 or MT-10. Uh, basically, it's still a short exhaust and it does have a direct uh, flow through. Um, so what we are going to attempt to do, which I will show step by step, um, is how to make it from that length to around that length. So if you can see, um, kind of an idea. So this is just the initial preview video. Uh, we will get definitely much better lighting as we progress and stuff like that. So what uh, the first thing is I did here is basically I removed the uh, I removed the uh, rivets. So I just drilled out the rivets, which I popped that off. And then getting a closer look, I can see that the inner cap here, um, or inner tube, I guess you'd want to call it, um, does have some spot welds on it. So I attempted to take a Dremel and I don't know if you can see that here, let's zoom in. Um, I took a Dremel and um, I kind of shaved around uh, the spot welds that you can see on the inside, uh, hoping that I would be able to release this, um, but unfortunately um, that is a no-go. So as I started looking a little bit further, so yes, I can see the spot welds that are inside here, which I have released uh, by taking a Dremel and cutting out the metal. Um, I can see that there's this weld around here, which that then passes to the inner tube on the inside. Uh, again, you know, as you can see the, the whole inner tube here, hello. Um, it looks like it's definitely welded on the inside to this, as this is one piece, which then that travels all the way down into here. Um, I don't know if you can see it there. Again, it's very hard. It's, tr it's trying to get the light in there. Um, you can kind of get a little bit of the gist of it. Um, th it seems to be, uh, definitely some kind of a weld inside from the inner portion of it. So looks like when everything gets assembled, um, they they start with the initial uh, inner tube here and they get all that connected and then they insert it and then they spot weld it here or they, they press weld it, which then that's already connected onto the inner tube there and then they finish it off with some other welds. So definitely a tricky uh, job to do. Um, you can't just cut straight through because again, you wanna have this inner tube pipe um, connecting and, and kind of still working uh, flow and, and, and you know seamlessly uh, across the whole exhaust because if you have a gap inside, then it's gonna start burning uh, your, your pipe or your, it's gonna start burning the, uh, uh, the packing on the inside and you don't want that. So. What I am going to do, uh, because like I said, I want to make it short. So this is my line on where 
uh, I want it to be. So it will be a, a nice shorty exhaust like that versus like that. Um, so I can't just cut it straight off because again, this this inner pipe, I need it to overlap or over connect the, the inner tube that's on the inside. So I'm going to just basically cut a line down through here all the way around without cutting the whole pipe off and then cut around here on this line here and then cut it across so I can take this band off. So basically I'm just taking a whole strip off. So now that will expose the inner tube, which will then allow me to cut it uh, at a further distance. So I will have the, the front portion of the pipe on the outer shell. And then the inner tube is going to be sticking out probably about maybe another half inch. That just kind of gives me a little bit of free play um, as to what I need to do once I dis remove this piece from this outer shell so I can kind of overlay and, and overlap on the inside once I've expanded the pipe. So next step is going to be the cutting portion. Once I get to that, I will come back onto this video and we can kind of discuss as to what happens next. All right, welcome back to the second portion, uh, I would guess we could call it, uh, of the MT-10 exhaust mod. Uh, so as uh, just to recap on uh, the first portion, uh, I was kind of showing you uh, what I was going to do in regards to the um, stock exhaust as I did not want to go out and purchase uh, a slip-on or a, a full exhaust system. Uh, whereas um, I was fortunate enough and I found a stock R1 uh, factory exhaust. Um, again, this is not the exact same one as this one now is the MT-10 exhaust, which I just pulled off the MT-10. But kind of recapping as to what I had done, remember where I've uh, made markings and I said I was going to uh, cut the, the exhaust off um, and that's where I have actually done that today. So we are going to now kind of put this one aside, which was the MT-10 exhaust, pull out the MT-0, um, the R1 exhaust, sorry. And uh, after all the modifications and the cuttings, um, this is what I ended up with. Um, bear in mind, the only thing I have left to do now is actually uh, just put in the rivets, uh, which I will go ahead and do that um, next. Um, the only reason why I haven't done that is because I would like to show you the inside of this. So, if you recall, um, I did the marking off and then uh, that was with the, the tape and stuff like that. Um, cut it out and I said I was going to kind of do two cuts, right? Uh, just so I can find out where the center pipe uh, that I needed to go to in regards to getting a perfect seal. So let's take the end cap off and that, that again was just a removed with a, a drill because they're just basic rivets. So the actual mod um, as per se, Let's say if we kind of put this back together, which uh, equaled out to the original length of the uh, R1 or MT-10 exhaust, there's absolutely no differences between the two other than uh, the little heat shield that is included. So um, once I had done my markings and found the, the uh, length that I wanted to cut it down to, um, that's basically where I went to do the cut. And like I was saying, I was thinking of doing a single cut here and then doing another cut here and then taking this off so I can see where the inner pipe was. I didn't need to do that. So once I had done my initial cut and I've removed that, um, basically you had this inner plate, um, which was not just only necessarily welded to this, but it was also, um, uh, sorry, riveted, but it was also welded. So what I had to do in order to remove this inner tube uh, with the outlet pipe uh, in order for that to remove off of the uh, exhaust. Um, I started to take a Dremel and I uh, kind of cut out on each side to see if I can pull it out. Uh, but unfortunately it, it required a little bit more than that just due to the fact that the welds uh, are pretty good. Now, being said that, 
uh, stock exhausts are not meant to be taken apart, right? I mean, they're, they're meant to be built and they're meant to stay like that forever and ever, whereas when you go with aftermarket or, or accessory ones, um, they're designed to be taken apart, right? So that you can do repacking and stuff. Stock ones, uh, mufflers and whatnot, are not designed for that, so they're not constructed um, to be uh, easily disassembled. So, I ended up uh, basically cutting, as you can see, cutting notches out uh, at the four welded locations, and uh, once that was off, this was off, um, I was then able to take a hammer with a punch and just basically push out um, the end pipe here, right? So once I've had that in my hands, um, as I'm talking here as well, uh, I'm going to be posting up uh, the images uh, one by one so you can actually see the progression uh, of the actual modification. So we are now at the, por the point where I've separated the two pieces. So this is the outer shell. Um, they still had the inner shell with the pipe because basically remember that kind of went up the length of this part where then this attaches to the inner portion of this, right? So if you kind of thinking about it, we're now like at a, a an exhaust with the cut outer shell, but then still the, the inner tube, which was quite long. What I had to do once I, I actually taped up the, uh, the fiberglass packing, and then I've removed that, so I kind of cut with a knife, cut around it, and then kind of removed it as a whole, set that aside, because technically speaking, we won't be using that anymore due to the fact that we've now shortened our exhaust. The bottom portion still had the packing in it, right? So I kind of packed that down. Um, what I did in order to, to get the proper height uh, of the inner cut, um, basically I rested a, a, a flat edge, all right? Let's say I rested the flat edge on there, um, while this was still together, sorry, um, that inner tube that came up in the middle, I kind of rested my flat edge on it and I measured um, what the distance was between this edge and the edge of the inner tube, right? So let's say as an example, um, if I, hopefully I can do this, let's do it this way. If you can kind of get an idea um, this is kind of how it was. There was a, a little bit of a step down, right? So hopefully the, the lights, uh, yeah, the lights are. So there's kind of like a, a step in. So you want to match that same um, distance in order to get your end pipe to sit properly on it. So that's the tricky one, right? So what I had done is basically I, I cut the outer edge, I went onto the inside and I took an, another um, a pneumatic uh, sawzall, I guess you'd want to call it. Uh, again, refer to the pictures. And I was cutting um, on the inside, but at an angle, so it allowed me to get a little bit deeper. Once I did that, which is this, you can see, um, I now separated this. So now we're basically left with a just a shorty pipe. From that, um, I took a grinding tool and I just, cleaned up the, the inner pipe and, and shaved it down a little bit more to get the, the distance, the measurement, again, remember, the height uh, between the two edges uh, at almost identical uh, spacing as to what I needed. Once I had done that, I packed up uh, more uh, packing fiberglass inside just to get a nice, good, dense feel. And then I, I took a rubber mallet and I packed the end tip back on and made it all flush around because that's how basically it is from from uh, from factory and then from there um, I just basically lined up my drill from the outer part um, as you can see and basically just re-drilled uh, the holes where the holes were already positioned um, from the inner piece so again, if you look closely, you can kind of see um, there's still those cutouts um, from the, um, uh, let's see if I can kind of change the, there we go. So there's still the, the actual cutouts um, on the inside, but again, that won't uh, affect uh, any, of the, um, any of the performance or, or exhaust of, for 
so to speak anyways because it's still a very tight seal right so it's it's pretty it's pretty good for that so the last portion and the last thing that all needs to be done is basically then taking um, the end cap and then placing it back on and as you can see everything all the the rivet holes do align up um, so basically taking this and I'll just have to rivet it back on so now we are going with the shorty so um, weight difference yeah there's a bit of a weight difference look and appearance difference absolutely um, as you can clearly see um, <laughs> it's quite a, quite a big difference uh, it definitely looks more like a, a, the um, Yamaha Yashimura uh, style pipe other than being factory finish right um, reason why I did this and not having to go out and buy an accessory one is, is again I wanted this nice clean finish here um, so to give it the factory factory look um, whereas many of the other slip-ons that you you do um, it just kind of it has an unfinished look to it right and then it just looks really but ugly um, it just kind of looks like it was a it was an afterthought right so if I would go now I can transfer over the heat shield I guess you would want to call it onto the little shorty get the shorty installed onto the bike and then it will just give it that factory finished look just with uh, um, yeah really nice so um, I don't know if you can it's really hard to tell guys I'm so sorry about the the inside here I'll try to get some some better images I'll take some pictures with a flash and kind of upload that as well onto the uh, onto this video but basically everything is identical as to what it was stock um, other than yeah you're just kind of got rid of that and kind of got rid of that so the next portion uh, of this video part three I guess is is getting it installed back onto the bike which only takes a couple of minutes so I'll do the rivets get it back onto the bike and then we can uh, test out the sound so um, I guess the, probably the best thing to do is, is just take a couple of minutes I'll do uh, a sound test with the stock muffler and then the sound test with the uh, modified stock muffler in regards to shortness I don't want to go super loud uh, but I want to add a little bit more sound to it uh, still retaining all the the stock specs as per se um, I just didn't want to go with a, an aftermarket product um, due to the fact that the price I, I just didn't want to pay that kind of price so if uh, you guys are, are up for the challenges and and kind of have a, a little bit of uh, knowledge of tools and stuff like that it really wasn't that hard to to modify um, you know it took me all in all uh, a half an hour to do it so uh, again that was using proper tools and and just cutting tools uh, but other than that like uh, it doesn't take more than a drill a saw um, a couple of hammers right and stuff like that and just a little bit of uh, assistance through a video like this so guys if I can do it um, you can definitely do it and you can make it uh, definitely a little bit more unique without having to spend out you know uh, the big bucks in regards to a slip-on so you know I say go ahead and do it I completely uh, like I said I didn't have any trouble it was quite easy I quite enjoyed that just bear in mind um, the the fiberglass packing protect yourselves get get yourselves covered up get gloves on when you are coming to to the point of actually cutting and all that I mean pr really protect yourself because um, it gets all over the place and gets really really itchy so um, if you do get some on your skin and stuff like that and you want to wash yourself off don't wash yourself with hot water uh, keep it nice and cool uh, get a good cloth and stuff like that and just kind of really scrub yourself off um, it makes a world of a difference but uh yeah anyways let's get this done sound tests and if you have any comments any questions uh, let me know again thank you very much for uh, tuning in and hopefully uh, this helps you guys out all right all right, okay, so now we're down to part three of the modification of stock exhaust for the MT-10 slash also R1. So with the assistance of Sage here, um, what we're going to do, we're going to do, wait till the door closes so it's nice and quiet. Close. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is actually we're gonna do a three-part 
sound test and yes we are in a building complex basement not outdoors but again the sound should be very similar um, to to well it'll give you a good idea anyways in regards to the different sound levels so right now we've got the stock exhaust on here um, and then we got that shorty, which is the, the modification as I did. Then we're gonna take it off. Riveted now, completely assembled, all done, right? So it is ready to go. Mr. Sage, fire the engine! Well, I gotta wait for it to start up again. Okay, go. So there we go. So that is the stock MT-10 exhaust. <laughs> Shut her down. All right, now we're gonna do the fun part. Okay, so now we are at sound test number two, which is no exhaust. So again, you gotta do the same thing, right? You fire it up, yeah, it wait, yeah. wait for a couple of seconds, and then, and then blip it to rubs, okay? So in three, two, one, go. I like that one. That's Not nice. Tight. Are you kidding me? That sounds, nice. that sounds like as if it's about to go to a drag strip. <laughs> Literally, no good, no good for the street. And not only that, it's butt ugly. Don't like it. There's so. nothing on it, of course, but if you get really, really Number small. three, let's do the install of the modified shorty R1 pipe. Okay, now as you can see, the actual exhaust is physically installed, so we're going from this big monstrosity thing to this itty bitty 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 thing. So, check that out, man. That looks so clean. It's nice because you can actually see the real wheel now. I mean, it's not hiding the wheel. So, alrighty, Sage. In three, so you gotta wait. two, one, sound test. That's not bad. It's louder than stock. That's good. Hi <laughs> five. That, my friend, has got an awesome sound. So, just going with a shorty. Yeah. <laughs> it looks super clean, eh? Before we get noise <laughs> Before we get noise complaints. Actually, it's not so bad because it is a little bit louder than stock, we but not but not overly. So it definitely gives it a whole lot more attitude in both looks and sound, yet still doesn't, and it still does not uh, hinder the performance and the, and the torque and the low bottom end torque because you're still running the exact same thing. So again, if you can get yourself a used pipe or if you are courage enough to cut your own stock pipe, as I said before, hands down, do it. So Rob, Sage, it's a dire thing. Tutorial on how to do that. Give us your feedback, give us your comments or suggestions. If you have any questions, let us know. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. If you have, thank you very much for your subscriptions. Be safe, have fun, be good, and don't forget, cover it up. I, I, I have a comment on that pipe though. It's gonna be... <sighs> what? You have a pipe. comment on the pipe. It's stinky. Okay. It's stinky. Yeah, it's brand new. It needs to be. It's a brand new pipe. It hasn't been run. Never. Never. He's taken it right off. So he just got his out. Literally. So again, Alex, thank you very much for your help on selling me that uh, pipe from your R1. Uh, I totally appreciate it. Give us a comment uh, if you do see this video again. Peace. Be safe. Wow. Yeah. Sexy, sexy. It does look good though. It looks good. Yeah. It looks like super good. The only thing that nice. doesn't look good is the dirty wheel.